Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. As we are discussing about the adsorption uh, on this you know solid fluid operation uh, as a module. So, in this lecture we will try to uh, discuss about that uh, you know analysis of adsorption by different isotherms. Uh, in the previous uh, lecture we have uh, discussed about that uh, what is the application, what is the basic principle of adsorption and how that adsorption can be you know uh, classified uh, based on you know that characteristics of the you know uh, adsorption uh, uh, criteria. And also we have discussed about that uh, uh, what are the different you know uh, mechanism of that adsorption uh, there. So, here we will try to uh, discuss about that uh, you know adsorption characteristics by uh, some you know isotherms or equilibrium condition. Now, you know that there will be certain basis of adsorption that the adsorption separation basically uh, is based on three distinct mechanism especially for uh, you will see that uh, when uh, that gaseous molecule or you know that uh, liquid molecules to be adsorbed on the surface of very active you know uh, solid uh, particles based on their characteristics. So, in this case uh, there are three mechanisms that can be you know assessed uh, here. One is called steric mechanism, another is called equilibrium mechanism and third one is called kinetic mechanism. And in case of steric mechanism you will see that the porous solid has a force that will have some dimension such that it allows a small molecules to enter while excluding large molecules from the entry. So, this is called steric mechanism. Whereas, uh, equilibrium mechanism that uh, it is basically based on the solid that will have uh, different abilities to accommodate their species that is a stronger adsorbing species is preferentially removed by the solid materials or not that based on that you know adsorbing capability this you know uh, mechanism depends on. And uh, kinetic mechanism is based on different rates of diffusion of different species into the pore and the faster diffusing species is preferentially removed by the solid by controlling the time of exposure. So, all these mechanisms depends on the process parameter, what type of materials, whether is there any pores or not, whether that materials are enough strengths to you know uh, withstand the temperature or not or also that capability of the you know adsorbent uh, to you know capture those you know organic or inorganic compounds based on their you know uh, typical characteristics of that uh, compounds. And also you will see that uh, some uh, you know materials that will be you know uh, having uh, the characteristics uh, and they will uh, you know uh, have that capacity or enhance their capacity based on that you know modification of their surface and also the you know reducing their you know size of that you know materials uh, uh, by different techniques. So, in that case that enhancement of that adsorption can be you know done. Uh, by that you know solid materials just by you know modifying its surface. So, we are having that you know three mechanism one is called steering mechanism, equilibrium mechanism and kinetic mechanism all those mechanism that depends on that process parameter. In this case that process parameter will uh, stand here uh, like uh, size of the particles even uh, uh, amount of that particles even uh, the transport phenomena of that solid materials or you know gas or uh, liquid molecules onto the surface and also the porosity of the materials. Some other uh, intrinsic characteristics also actually affect on that you know uh, this adsorption characteristics. Now, uh, to analyze those you know adsorption. Uh, it is one of the important uh, condition or uh, you can say that uh, criteria you know uh, to assess that you know adsorption characteristics that is called adsorption equilibria or isotherms. So, adsorption equilibria of any pure components are the essential basis for the understanding of how much those components can be adsorbed by a solid adsorbent. So, this is the basic key parameters you can say for, for understanding that how much you know uh, compounds can be adsorbed on the solid surfaces. And with this information that is adsorption equilibria 
or isotherms with this information that adsorption kinetics of a component can be also analyzed. Okay. So, here uh, you will see that some materials uh, whenever that adsorb on the solid materials or an adsorbent, you will see that after adsorbing their uh, components and uh, to you know get separated from that adsorbent, it is required to you know desorb that materials from that surfaces. So, that adsorption and desorption of course, what will be that equilibrium condition that also to be known there. Okay. So, this is called equilibrium or isotherms. So, let us consider all those things here. For analyze that equilibria, there are several approach. Some are called uh, kinetic approach and uh, it is also called that you know the fundamental equation how can be derived so that that by that equation uh, this equilibria can be you know analyzed. And this you know uh, theory that means kinetic approach, uh, this is one theory that allows to understand the monolayer surface which is formed at the, uh, at the surface of that adsorbent for the adsorption on an ideal surface. And also you can say that the adsorption which will be due to the higher surface energy fluctuation that will be compared to the thermal energy of the molecule. And this energy fluctuation on the surface will be periodic nature. So, this type of approach it is called kinetic approach. And then another approach it is called Gibbs thermodynamic approach by which you can, you can also analyze this equilibria. In this case, you have to assume that some forms of thermal equation of state which will be related uh, to the number of mole of adsorbent. And in this case, you will see that the area and the uh, spreading pressure uh, also uh, that uh, the fundamental equations will be derived based on those you know area spreading pressure uh, all those things and also that number of moles that will be adsorbent. And uh, in this uh, kind of approach, you will see that such uh, you know that linear isotherms uh, that is called equilibria that uh, some other form of equations will be like there. Uh, it will be like you know linear isotherm, some will be called Volmer isotherm, some will be called Healy de Boer isotherm, uh, Follower, uh, Guggen Heim isotherm, even Harkins Jura isotherms. These are the name of that isotherms, uh, all those isotherms basically equation. Uh, which is derived based on that you know a state of that you know how many numbers of molecules to be adsorbed on the adsorbent and also at what condition of that surface area and the uh, sur uh, even, even uh, under which pressure it is happened. So, based on that these uh, are the isotherms uh, are developed. So, these are the some names uh, of that isotherms uh, based on which you can analyze that how much amount of that you know adsorbent can be adsorbed on the surface of the adsorbent. Then another approach it is called practical approach. In this case you will see that due to the complex pore and surface structure of that you know adsorbent sometimes you will not be able to you know analyze those you know fundamental transport of that uh, molecules of gaseous or liquid which is transported to that you know uh, adsorbent surface. And uh, also there are so many other you know variables will be affecting on that you know adsorption process. So, in that case uh, you will see that uh, due to the complex structure, due to the complex pore even surface structure that that sometimes will not be you know uh, giving that you know uh, exact analysis of that adsorption process by that you know isotherm of that theoretical approach of like kinetic approach and you know thermodynamic approach. So, in that case sometimes many successful you know semi empirical approach can be you know proposed. You know some renowned scientists that uh, they have proposed some isotherms based on that empirical uh, approach. In that case they have correlated that uh, you know adsorption capacity with that you know uh, variables there. And they are making that some uh, non-linear equations just empirical equations there will be no certain you know theory that will be followed from that you know mechanistic approach or kinetic approach or that thermodynamic approach. It is directly that some relations based on that you know transport phenomena. Since that transport phenomena depends on different uh, parameters different you know variables. So, in that case all those parameters all those variables will be affecting in different way. So, as an average they are making that one correlations uh, along with that you know different variables to assess that uh, final yield of that adsorption. 
So, those isotherms uh, that is developed empirically uh, are called you know friend Lewis isotherms, even sometimes it is called Schiff's isotherms that is called Langmuir friend Lewis uh, you know isotherms. Also, some isotherms it is called Toth isotherms, even Uniland isotherm, even uh, Dubinin uh, Redusque based uh, you know isotherms. These are some you know empirical isotherms or empirical model based on which you can uh, you know assess that you know. Uh, adsorption capacity of that adsorbent. So, we are getting three approaches of that analysis of equilibrium condition of that adsorption. One is called kinetic approach, another is called Gibbs thermodynamic approach and then practical approach it is called empirical approach. So, discussion on that you know all those you know uh, approach it will take you know different lecture for that, but here we will only uh, discuss uh, uh, two or three isotherms that is very widely used you know in different uh, adsorption processes uh, for analysis you know capacity of that adsorption. So, we will discuss here uh, only those you know uh, isotherms there. So, let us consider first that Langmuir isotherms which is uh, widely used isotherm for assessing that or analyzing that you know adsorption process. The most basic theory in adsorption it is called that link, uh, the Langmuir theory. It is developed in 1918 and this theory allows to understand the monolayer uh, surface adsorption on an you know ideal surface and adsorption onto a flat surface based on kinetic view of point. So, this you know isotherm is basically based on that kinetic view point. So, in this case what is the theory that Langmuir theory? Here uh, as per that Langmuir theory it is said that there is a continual process of bombardment of molecules onto the surface and a corresponding evaporation that is called desorption of molecules from the surface to maintain zero rate of accumulation at equilibrium. So, here this Langmuir theory actually states what is that at an equilibrium condition what are those you know molecules come you know into contact with that solid surface of adsorbent initially it will be adsorbed and then it will be dissolved ok and this you know adsorption and desorption will be in such rate that there will be that zero rate of accumulation of that adsorbent onto the surface of the adsorbent. So, this is the basic idea of this Langmuir theory. So, at equilibrium we will having that always you know zero rate of accumulation of the adsorbent on the surface. So, for that there will be a certain rate of adsorption and there will be certain rate of desorption. So, both the rate adsorption and desorption will be in such way that there will be no adsorption and desorption occurs in that you know surfaces. So, here in this case we can say that uh, there will be a equilibria, there will be uh, equilibria in such that there will be adsorption is equal to desorption. Now, uh, to develop that you know Langmuir isotherms, they have given some assumptions like that surface will be an homogeneous in nature that is adsorption energy is constant over all sides of the adsorbent. Number two, adsorption on surface is localized that is adsorbed atoms or molecules are adsorbed at the definite or localized sites. And then each site can accommodate only one molecule or atom and gaseous molecule behave ideally only one monolayer will be forms no adsorbent or adsorbent interactions will be there and adsorbent molecule will be is immobile. So, in this case these are the assumptions which are to be followed to develop that you know Langmuir isotherms. So, these are the assumptions and then based on these assumptions the Langmuir theory as per that kinetic principle can be you know developed in such way that they are the rate of adsorption will be equal to the rate of desorption from the surface. So, this is the main motto of this you know development of isotherms. In this case the rate of striking or you can say that attaching or you can say that bombarding in mole per unit time and unit area that will be obtained from the kinetic theory of gas which is given in equation number 1. So, it will be regarded as R s that will be equal to p by root over 2 pi m r g t. 
So, this is called rate of striking the surface in mole per unit time and unit area. Okay. So, this is basically depending on pressure and molecular weight and also the temperature okay, of that you know molecules which is to be transported to the adsorbent surfaces. So, here you will see that the abundant rate that is adsorption rate that will be equal to evaporation rate as per this picture here. And this rate of striking or bombardment depends on a pressure and temperature and that uh, rate of striking or the bombardment uh, depends uh, you know that uh, uh, can be expressed by this equation number 1 here. And uh, then if you are considering that a fraction alpha of gas molecules that is striking the surface will condense and is held by the surface force until these adsorbed molecules evaporate again. So, in that case alpha will be the fraction of gas molecules that will be striking on the surface of the adsorbent and it will be condensed there. Now, if you are suppose having that alpha will be equal to 1 especially for ideal surface then alpha will be called as you know sticking coefficient. Okay. So, here alpha less than 1 it will be for uh, real surface and alpha is equal to 1 means here ideal surface that means all the molecules will be you know adsorbed on the surface and it will be condensed on that surface. And the rate of adsorption in mole adsorbed per unit bare surface area per unit time that can be expressed by this equation number 2 here. So, it will be equal to what is that uh, uh, R a that will be alpha p by root of r. 2 pi m r g t. So, uh, here uh, basically this uh, p by root over 2 pi m g r t this is basically the rate of bombardment and whereas, this alpha is the you know sticking coefficient it is a fraction of that bombardment. So, that will be regarded as adsorption rate. So, this is denoted by r a. So, r a is equal to alpha p by root over 2 pi m r g t and therefore, the number of moles adsorbed per unit area covered and uncovered per unit time we can write by this equation. Okay. So, here this r a will be is equal to alpha p into root over 2 pi m r g t into 1 minus theta. Here theta is what? The theta is equal to fractional coverage. Suppose after adsorption molecules will be you know sticking on the surface of the adsorbent and gradually it will be covered the surface of the adsorbent. So, now what will be the fraction of that surface will be covered by uh, sticking molecules that is uh, regarded by that you know uh, theta which is called the fractional coverage okay. and 1 minus theta will be equal to basically fraction of empty sites which is not actually covered by that you know uh, uh, molecules. Okay. So, in that case we can write that you know rate of adsorption will be equal to alpha p into root over 2 pi m r g t into 1 minus theta. So, 1 minus theta is basically that you know what will be the fraction of gas molecules that is sticking on the surface. Whereas, theta is the fractional coverage 1 minus theta will be equal to not coverage okay. and then rate of desorption from the covered surface now after adsorption that surface will be covered now what will be the rate of desorption that will be you know going to uncovered. So, in that case R d can be represented by this R d uh, for this you know rate of desorption. So, that will be equal to k d into theta. So, here k d is basically the desorption rate constant here k d can be represented by this equation here k d infinity exponent of minus e d by R g t and then theta is basically the fractional coverage. So, in this case E d here in this equation E d is equal to activation energy for desorption which is equal to the heat of adsorption for physically absorbed species since there is no energy barrier for physical adsorption. And K d infinity it is the rate constant for you know desorption at infinite temperature. Okay. And this inverse of this parameter is denoted by T d infinity which is called basically the average residence time of the adsorption. Okay. 
and for physical adsorption this surface residence time is typically ranging between 10 to the power minus 13 to 10 to the power minus 9 second. While for chemisorption this residence time has a very wide range ranging from 10 to the power minus 6. So, I think you understood this that what is the rate of adsorption and what is the rate of desorption. Okay? And this rate of uh, desorption that uh, actually uh, depends on that you know average resistance time of the adsorption there. Now, as per that you know uh, Langmuir isotherms, uh, this rate of adsorption will be equal to rate of desorption. So, if we equate that rate of adsorption and desorption, we can get this final form of equation 7 that will be equal to theta is equal to Bp by 1 plus Bp, where B is a term which is defined by this equation number 8 here that means alpha exponent of q by r g t divided by k d infinity root over 2 pi m g t that will be equal to b infinity exponent of q by r g t. So, this is basically that after simplification what is the coefficient b is coming based on the terms of you know that uh, flow rate total heat of adsorption and uh, also what is that you know temperature there. And uh, here in this case Q is basically the heat of adsorption and is equal to the activation energy for desorption E d. And B infinity is basically defined as alpha by K d infinity root over 2 pi m R g t and B is equal to 5.682 into 10 to the power minus 5 into m t whole to the power 1 by 2 this is Tor inverse. So, this is actually applicable for the gas molecules of nitrogen which is to be adsorbed on the surface. Now, based on this you know equation 7. So, this is called uh, you know Langmuir isotherms of this form theta is equal to Bp by 1 plus Bp and this equation basically depends on what is that uh, this theta that means, uh, coverage of that you know fractional coverage of that adsorbate onto the uh, adsorbent surface and it is uh, it is a function of pressure. Now, if we you know uh, uh, you know observe that you know uh, fractional coverage of that adsorbent onto the surface based on that you know pressure you can get this type of profile here as shown in the slide. Here you will see that amount adsorbed will be increased as per pressure increase. Whereas, that adsorbed of uh, you know molecules onto the surface will be you know decreased if you increase the temperature. Whereas, that amount adsorbed will be increased if your heat of adsorption will be increased there. So, in this way we can assess that what will be the amount of particles or molecules or you know that. Uh, other ions to be adsorbed onto the surface of that adsorbent based on the pressure that you can assess by equation number 7 along with that equation number 8, 9 and 10. Now, then the Langmuir equation, equation number 7, then written in terms of the amount adsorbed useful for data correlation. So, theta will be equal to B p by 1 plus B p, this is the equation where B is uh, given in equation number 8. And this equation number 7 can be written by equation number 11. How? That theta can be written as C mu by C mu m. What is C mu? C mu here is defined as the amount of adsorbed in mole per unit mass or volume. Okay? So, it is basically a concentration per unit mass or volume. And C mu m is basically the maximum adsorbed concentration that is corresponding to a complete monolayer coverage onto the surface of the adsorbent. Okay. So, we are having here uh, instead of theta that C mu by C mu m. So, C mu will be equal to C mu m into B p by 1 plus B p that is given in equation number 11. Now, in this case mu is one subscript here this is basically denoting the adsorbed phase and the volume of adsorbent particle is taken as the particle volume minus the void volume where molecules are present in free form. So, in this way you can have this you know final form of this Langmuir equation here as equation number 
11. Now, this equation number 11 from this you know you can find it out what will be the you know parameter b, what will be the parameter c mu m that means what will be the uh, m maximum uh, you know uh, adsorbed concentration corresponding to a complete monolayer coverage that you can find it out and also what will be the parameter b as defined in equation number 11. Now, how to do that? That you have to you know find it out that B or C mu m from the experimental data. In that case, uh, the parameter B and C mu m can be obtained uh, by fitting that linearized form of this equation just you know uh, with that uh, you know experimental data. So, from that equation number 11, you first you know. Uh, rearrange this equation number 11 as per equation number 12, where it will be as 1 by c mu that will be equal to 1 by c mu m minus 1 by c mu m b into 1 by p. Okay. So, in this case you will see that here you will see that this will be equation of straight line here this will be actually plus this is plus 1 by this. Okay. Uh, so, this will be equation of uh, straight line. So, here uh, you can uh, you know make a plot 1 by c mu versus you know 1 by p here as shown in the you know slide here a uh, graph of that in x axis it will be 1 by p and y axis it will be 1 by c mu. So, parameters b and you will see that this uh, you know c mu m uh, to be obtained from that slope and the intercept from this you know plotted data. So, that intercept will give you that what will be the c mu m okay, that means 1 by intercept and slope that means 1 by c mu b is equal to slope and from that slope and intercept you can easily calculate what will be the b value there. So, from that experimental data okay, you will be able to calculate what will be the you know maximum adsorbed concentration and also that parameter as uh, in equation number 11 or 12. Uh, as per that Langmuir isotherm. So, from that Langmuir isotherms from the experimental data you can easily find it out what will be the maximum adsorbed concentration of that solute onto the surface of the adsorbent. And for that you have to do the experiment in such way that with respect to change of pressure you have to collect that you know concentration of that solute onto the surface with respect to pressure. Now, let us do an example for this uh, you know theory. In this case uh, one example it is given that the uh, propane gas is adsorbed in activated carbon experimentally in a laboratory at different temperatures. The adsorption data of propane on activated carbon at 283 degree Celsius, 303 degree Celsius not uh, it is it is in Kelvin okay, 283, 303 and 333 Kelvin. Uh, here C mu is given uh, in uh, millimole per gram of that you know propane gas and find the parameter of Langmuir isotherm. So, in this case in table it is given that at different temperature at different pressure what will be the concentration of that propane gas that is adsorbed onto the surface of the adsorbent and uh, here in the table it is shown. And after that what you have to do you have to plot this experimental data in this graph here. Uh, you have to plot where in x axis it will be 1 by p and in y axis it will be 1 by c mu. So, in you have to calculate what will be the 1 by p one for what will be the 1 by c mu also from this table and then you plot it. So, at different temperature you will get this different you know profile and if you fit this profile by least square method you will have this you know slope and intercept. So, suppose if you consider this uh, the profile at this 283 k. So, this will be your profile okay. and this profile will give you the slope as 0.2511 and intercept will be 0 0.2283. So, we are getting this slope and intercept and once you get this slope and intercept then what will be the value of you know c mu m. So, c mu m is equal to 1 by intercept then you can calculate and 
b will be equal to intercept by slope then you can easily calculate what will be the you know c mu m and b for respective temperature similarly. So, for 283 k we are getting c mu m will be equal to 4.51 and b is equal to 0 0.883 whereas, at 303 k the c mu m will be equal to what 3.88 and b is equal to 0 0.671 and at 333k c mu m will be equal to 3.68 and b will be equal to 0 0.197. So, in this way you will be able to calculate at a different temperature what will be the maximum adsorbed concentration of that you know uh, solute onto the surface of the adsorbent. So, if you increase the temperature this c mu m is you know coming to decrease whereas, b value is also you know it is seen that will be decrease. So, C mu and B this is actually the parameter these are the parameters from that you know Langmuir isotherm. So, how to calculate that Langmuir isotherm parameters from the experimental data you can understand now. Now, let us discuss another isotherms that is empirical it is widely used also it is called friend Lewis uh, empirical isotherm and in this case you know this isotherm is uh, expressed by this equation number 13 and it is developed in 1909 by uh, scientist it is called Herbert Frandlius this is German chemist and he has uh, suggested that this uh, adsorption concentration which is varying with that pressure will be related by this equation 13 that will be equal to C mu that will be equal to K p to the power 1 by n where n is a uh, some coefficient or constant you can say and this uh, n value will give you that you know the you know uh, characteristics or behavior of that you know uh, molecules adsorption onto the surface of the adsorbent. Uh, in that case if n is greater than 1 or is larger uh, the value of n the adsorption isotherms becomes more non-linear as its behavior deviates further away from the linear isotherms. And uh, for n is greater than 10, the adsorption uh, isotherms is uh, approaching, uh, it is called that uh, uh, rectangular isotherms or irre irreversible isotherms, it is called. The pressure or concentration needs to go down to an extremely low value before adsorbate molecules would dissolve from the surface. So, this is the criteria where if you are getting that n is greater than uh, 10, in that case, you have to. Uh, control that you know surface of that you know adsorbent molecule to get your uh, better yield. So, another co coefficient it is called k, k is also is a parameter okay, that actually uh, decreases or uh, it depends on that you know temperature and also other characteristics of that you know flow condition even flow pattern like this. So, we are having this C mu is equal to k to p to the power 1 by n here also you have to find out that parameters k and n from the experimental data. So, to do that you have to take a logarithm on both sides uh, and then plotting that you know uh, data uh, after calculating from that you know experimental observation. Okay. So, in this case uh, you will have some you know limitation of this Prandtl's uh, you know empirical isotherms. This is actually though uh, popularly used in adsorption of organics. Uh, from aqueous streams onto the activated carbon, but uh, it does not have a finite limit when pressure is sufficiently high. And also to find that you know parameters that you have to follow this equation 15 and 16. So, what you have to do? You have to take a logarithm on both sides of that equation number 13 here that is front loose isotherms, empirical isotherms and then uh, k uh, where this k uh, can be calculated based on this equation number 16 and uh, here 1 by n will be is equal to here R g t by a 0. So, this n basically depends on that you know characteristics adsorption potential that is denoted by a 0 and also uh, this temperature of that you know adsorption condition. And this constant k depends on that pressure as well as temperature there and also some characteristic adsorption potential. So, you have to find it out that you know C mu and uh, k and then n value from that experimental data. Now, let us do an uh, example of the same you know uh, propane gas adsorption 
uh, onto the you know activated carbon uh, which is done experimentally and the experimental data as are given here in the table. And then in this case again we can you know calculate that what is the log p or ln p you can say and what is the ln c mu and after that you just plot it in a graph and then uh, you know that you will get that different you know profile at a different temperature and from that uh, temperature you will get that uh, different uh, coefficient and slope and that coefficient and slope will give you that uh, value of k and n value ok. So, at 283 k will be equal to 2.58 and n will be equal to 7.01 whereas, at 303 uh, 3 Kelvin that k value will be equal to 2.13 and n will be equal to 6.38 and at 333 uh, Kelvin this k value will be coming down uh, uh, to 1.75 and n will be equal to you know 5.98. So, in this way you can easily calculate what will be the value of k and n from the experimental data. So, I think you understood that uh, what are the uh, different adsorption uh, isotherms uh, or uh, adsorption equilibria uh, uh, based on which you can assess that uh, uh, what uh, you know extent of uh, you know molecules or concentration can be adsorbed onto the surface of the molecule based on uh, pressure and temperature change. And uh, uh, I think uh, you understood if you have any other doubt you can uh, consult with me by this email. And uh, the next lecture we will try to uh, understand uh, more about this you know adsorption uh, and there uh, we will discuss about that some kinetics theory ok based on which how that adsorption also can be you know uh, assessed whether it will be the first order or uh, pseudo first order reaction or not or uh, some other uh, conditions for that adsorption or not. So, uh, I think uh, 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 you will understand these things uh, and uh, uh, you please uh, go through the slides once more if you have any other doubt for this mathematical expression for isotherms and also to solve. So, thank you for your uh, kind attention. Have a nice day. Thank you.